Next fallacy is comparing percentage with absolute numbers. This happens when percentage or proportion is compared with absolute data. Look at this example here. Jack improved his score by 200%. Thus, he performed well. We have taken this example earlier. What if his score was 1 out of 100 after a 200% increase? It becomes a 3 out of 100, which may not be a good performance. Let's take a GMAT-like example now. Here is an argument followed by a question stem. Read the question stem, read the argument and come up with a broad expectation from the correct answer choice. Please pause the video and figure it out. So what we know is that the GNP of A is 95, let us say, and Kavi's is 100. And then this is supposed to grow by 12% and this is supposed to grow by 4%. So this would be 104 and this would be something around 106 to 107. Don't waste your time in figuring out the exact value. The point is that this is going to be greater than 104. So which of the following can properly be inferred? Look at this answer choice here. Now we know that the total GNP is going to be higher. We don't know the population of A and C. So whether the per capita income is going to be higher, we don't know. This answer choice is not correct. It commits the mistake of comparing percentage with absolute numbers. One more answer choice here. This answer choice compares GNP, the total GNP of the two countries. And yes, this can be established that the GNP of A is going to be more than the GNP of C. This answer choice is all right. This was the concept guys. GMAT shots are deliberately kept brief. For an elaborate explanation, please refer the stage one videos. Thanks for watching.